Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a brief review of this book, Darwin's Blind Spot, Evolution Beyond Natural Selection by Frank Ryan. That's the back of the book. And this is a book all about symbiology, and my interest in the history of the idea of symbiosis arises because I'm interested in a symbiological theory of cultural evolution, namely memetics. And academia was incredibly sluggish in adopting symbiosis in the organic realm. It was almost a hundred years between its discovery and its acceptance. The modern problems with the failure of academia to adopt symbiosis in the cultural realm broadly mirrors the problem that it had in adopting symbiosis in the organic realm. If cultural symbiology takes a hundred years to be accepted, that might take us up to around 2075, and the thought of one of my favourite theories sitting around in limbo for another 63 years before finally going mainstream within academia is not much fun to contemplate. So, I'm hoping that, by better understanding the history of symbiosis, I'll be able to find a way to move things along a little. Frank Ryan's book is quite good, and probably the part that I found most interesting was the speculation about how metamorphosis in butterflies could possibly have arisen out of a symbiotic union. I had not previously considered that possibility, and so I looked it up on the internet to see if it was true or not. The most vocal advocate of the idea has been a fellow called Don Williamson, who's written a whole book on the topic. However, numerous scientists have poured scorn on Don's idea. Don proposed that a winged insect impregnated a velvet worm to produce butterflies, and that seems to be an unlikely story. However, there are plenty of wasps and wasp-like creatures that use caterpillars as incubators for their own young, and in some cases there's one host insect for each baby wasp produced. For example, that happens with jewel wasps. It's relatively easy to imagine that such a symbiosis eventually evolves to cut out the stage where the adult has to track down a new host on which to lay some eggs. Frank Ryan has gone on to write another book titled The Mystery of Metamorphosis, a scientific detective story which is all about this topic and which I might have to read one day in order to determine whether the idea of metamorphosis being linked to symbiosis has anything to it. The rest of the book didn't teach me that much. The writing was okay, although not exactly riveting. The book rambled around quite a bit, covering adjacent subjects such as the Gaia hypothesis, the origin of life and the origin of sex, and many other topics. The book does approvingly mention memes, but it doesn't seem to grasp the possibility of them acting as cultural symbionts. It does have a chapter, starting with a quote from Richard Dawkins, that reads, But do we have to go to distant worlds to find other kinds of replicator and other consequent kinds of evolution? I think that a new replicator has recently emerged on this very planet. It's still in its infancy, still drifting clumsily around in its primeval soup, but already it is achieving evolutionary change at a rate that leaves the old gene panting far behind. And that sounds promising, right? I thought so too. However, the chapter then rambles around the idea that maybe cooperation between humans is a form of symbiosis, and then concludes with the idea that maybe trade is another form of symbiosis, and that's the extent of it. It's great to see some attempted coverage of cultural symbiology, however, this coverage is feeble and misses out most of the topic. Ryan doesn't seem to understand the possibility of cultural creatures existing, and so tries to find ways of considering cultural symbiosis that involve relationships between multiple humans. The history of symbiosis will need rewriting once cultural symbiology is more widely understood. One area where I wanted more information than the book provided was the negative effects of science stumbling along with the wrong theory for decades. Without symbiosis, evolution is less cooperative and more competitive. One of my concerns is that people might stumble along with the wrong theory of cultural evolution for a long time and in the process cause substantial damage to society through promoting competitive variants of politics and economics. Indeed, the damage done by incorrect forms of Darwinism in the past seems to have been substantial. The idea that a Darwinian economy or a political system is one dominated by competition has the potential to be especially harmful to society, and this is part of why a symbiotic theory of cultural evolution is such an urgent issue. Anyway, my appetite for the topic was not entirely satiated by this book, and I might have to read more books on the history of symbiosis to get a fuller picture of the subject. Enjoy!